Thank you for coming, and uh, let's start with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Father God, thank you that we, uh, we're here. These hardy souls uh, protect us from the wind and, uh, and the chill. Uh, praise you for, uh, for our outdoor church and for this sweet, sweet fellowship. And for each and every person here, Father, I pray that, this, uh, that your word will enrich us today, that we will be better equipped to give answers for our faith, that we will trust you more, that we'll have more Christian self-confidence. Uh, bless us now, Lord, as we fellowship and dig into your word and, and, uh, and bless this message in Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Who has ever witnessed to someone and they said, well, what's wrong with what I believe? <clears throat> or, what? Well, yeah, me too. Uh, what about... Uh, what about so-and-so over in uh, Romania and what they believe, or South Africa, or whatever? Uh, and I got to just pause and finish off this conversation, Elena, that we were having earlier. Uh, the component of that revelation from Romans 1 that I was missing was compassion. And so in, in witnessing uh, and in sharing your faith with others and in encountering counter-arguments and other thinking that you've not met with before, uh, rather than being uh, like I did when I was a new Christian, being obnoxious, instead being thoughtful and caring and compassionate and understanding that, okay, we have a mismatch in belief systems, so how do we bridge that gap? Uh, and specifically, how do we tolerate that? Or, or when do we not tolerate it? And how do we know the difference? And that's what the sermon's about today. And uh, it comes from a book that's out of the Reasons to Believe uh, ministry. Uh, this happens to be written by Ken Samples. Kenneth Richard Samples is his full name. Full name. And the book is called Without a Doubt, uh, Answering the 20 Toughest Faith Questions. It's a very good apologetic resource. And I pulled this sermon from his chapter which is fairly short on intolerance or tolerance, however you want to think about it. How should Christians answer the question of intolerance? So, yeah, we're a nation of very diverse cultures, ethnicities. Uh, we have all kinds of religious groups. Uh, just in Los Angeles County, according to uh, census data from 2019, guess how many languages are in uh, Los Angeles County? Oh, it's in the notes. <laughs> you have my notes, I forgot. Okay. One billion bonus points. Yeah, 42 languages in the households of LA County. Uh, I was thinking it would be a higher number than that, believe it or not, because I remember uh, a little factoid from the San Francisco school district where they had over 90 languages in the schools. So, I was also in San Francisco years ago on a doesn't matter, and I was I was at a at a touristy place. There were five groups of people, and all five groups were speaking different languages. So, uh, the First Amendment, you know, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So, we as a nation have set the stage for diversity. I mean, we really have. And what about the Second Amendment? A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed upon. Amen. Uh, this reminds me of Ott's clapping about the Second Amendment, which I wholeheartedly endorse, uh, but I gotta say, uh, I remember a bumper sticker from about 20 years ago that said, gun control works, ask the experts. Pol Pot, Hitler, and Stalin. Okay, moving on. Uh, <clears throat> so you might say our nation was founded on this idea of tolerance, it certainly was, and that people can hold whatever view they want and they're not gonna be penalized by the state. Which by the way, that's not true everywhere in the world. Russia, for example, okay? 
I hate to say, and I've been there 16 times, so it's not like I don't know what it's like to be in Moscow. So, fast forward to 2022. Um, tolerance is a virtue today, is it not? And it's embraced as an indispensable moral virtue. But the idea has become quite convoluted, as I'm sure you know. So, if someone expresses a view that hints around as, as, as I'm intolerant, and this has happened, I was talking to Elaine about this, it was actually a family member who uh, excoriated me for my views on a passage out of Romans chapter 1. And I was a new Christian, and I'd read this passage and basically just rushed into the kitchen to uh, share this valuable truth with, my, with the family member who basically blew up in my face and, uh, and, and didn't believe it. It denounced, uh, denounced me, denounced the Bible, and it was one of those sort of shocking moments. Uh, but I, I got stronger <laughs> from that. And note that uh, if someone is exercising intolerance towards you, well, that is also intolerance, right? So there's like a self-defeating aspect to intolerance. You, if I'm having intolerance to somebody's viewpoint, and I'm saying, well, you can't be intolerant, but you're being intolerant and criticizing my intolerance. So it's a self-defeating exercise. So uh, the tolerance issue as it relates to Christian truth claims. So this is something that we'll just pause for a second. The, uh, the idea that Jesus is the only way and setting that idea down next to the world religions. And the idea that, well, they all can't be true, but some people will tolerate all these as being true, and there's many paths that lead to God, okay? This is very common. And that I'm tempted to go down that rabbit hole, but just lay that aside for a second. You got all these belief systems out there, and, and then you have your, your Christian sensibilities, but you might just stop and ask yourself this question. What truth claims are those other religions actually saying about God? Or what do they say about how the universe began to exist? Or what do they say about who God is? Or, or what is God like? What are God's attributes? Uh, what does that system say about what happens after we die? What does it say about eternity? So just ask these basic questions and then you look at these systems and you realize, oh wow, well they're all saying different things. <laughs> And they're all going about it in a different way. And that is totally unlike what Jesus said. Completely. Okay, we're going to look at this. So, the tolerance issue as it relates to Christian truth claims raises important cultural apologetic questions. How should Christians respond to the charge that exclusivism, and when I say that, think John 14.6. What does John 14, 6 say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Okay? Amen. Amen. Thank you. So, uh, we get this, well, that's, that's exclusive. That means that the others aren't going to make it. Is that intolerant? Is it intolerant of me as a Christian to say that? What is the relationship between tolerance and truth? Tolerance. Let's, uh, definition would be in order here. Tolerance is defined as respecting the nature, beliefs, or behaviors of others. Okay, if, if I find out, like I did years ago on, a, on an adrenaline junkie ride that was called, the, it was called the slingshot, and it's like you're in this, got this big tower on each side and this huge like bungee cord system, and you sit in this chair facing upwards, and uh, it's hooked up to these bungee cords and they basically pull this chair down to the ground and, and it's pointed st straight up and they let it go and you go flying at the, at the speed of the recoil of these bungee cords and it's like you're going into outer space. I mean, it's, it's pretty wild. And, uh, and actually this was the, the beginning of the beginning of my relationship with my wife, Sandra. And I happened to be situated next to a guy and I said, let's pray to God that this system all holds together as we're about to do this ride. And he said to me, just with a straight face, that the aliens are the ones that put us on earth. And so I'm like, say what? Um, 
I said, well, if it comes unglued, we're going to find out who's right. That's the best I could do at that moment. Uh, but I wasn't, but I, I mean, I was tempted to be very disparaging, honestly. I was tempted to laugh. I can't guarantee you that I didn't laugh when he said that. But I want to just say that he has a right to believe that, right? Uh, and also, as I realize now, as I'm more mature in my faith, that's my mission field. This guy's my mission field. I want to witness to him about Jesus Christ. I want him to hear the gospel. I want him to raise his hand to be saved. I want to see him grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I don't want to ruin the mission field by laughing out loud or being obnoxious or being stupid with a basically a prospective believer. Like, you've heard this before. You might be the only person, you might be the only Christian that a non-believer ever runs across in their whole life. And when that happens, uh, I'm off the track here, but when that happens, it's, it's what I call sledgehammer evangelism. So uh, there's slow burn evangelism. Slow burn evangelism is your family, your closest friends, your colleagues, people that you're with all the time, you see them all the time. If you hit them with a sledgehammer, it's not gonna go well. Uh, but you, you sort of like, oh, praise God, uh, it was a great weekend, or how can I pray for you? Or you find out they've got a sick family member, or you find out they're wondering about a, a life issue, and you can counsel with them, or you can help them. I mean, that's like, you know, golly, uh, someone's having a problem, and they think about you. I, I'm gonna ask, uh, I'm gonna ask Bill to pray for me because I know he's a Christian. That's the beginning of what can turn into a really great moment when this person receives Christ. I run into somebody at the airport. Boom! You know, turn or burn. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it just like that. But you know what I mean. I'm never going to see this person again. This is my one opportunity to say something that will make them think. Okay. Now, uh, where was I? So, yeah, okay. Where, where I was was respecting someone else's viewpoint and not being disparaging, not being rude, and, and giving them this idea that I'm willing to listen.